what's going on guys welcome back to the channel and welcome to a video that we completely forgot that we'd be making that's right three or so days ago ford let us know that our mach e had come off the transport and is ready for new car delivery so we ordered it quite a long time ago back in 20 early 2020 something like that so we kind of spaced out that it'd be coming right about now and because we got the first edition we were one of the first people to put down money and spec the car it showed up before all the others so we are very early on in this process yeah so we're really excited for that because the mach e seems like a really good all-around car it'll be a great daily driver at a reasonable price point for pretty good range but we're excited to see uh, the areas that this mach e outperforms our teslas we want to do something a little different so we said well we'll hold off on the model i will not go that route let's go the mach e route and do something completely different and maybe sell one of our model threes to replace it so we'll have Model 3 performance maybe, and now the Mach-E for the slightly bigger crossover SUV, more space in the back, things like that. So I think this will be great to give you all a point of view of ownership of an EV that's not a Tesla. So this will be interesting, trying out all the different charging stations. That will all come when we're in the car and start to take on a few journeys. But today is delivery day, and so we are rolling up to the Ford dealership very soon, around the corner here, and can't wait to show you guys. all right into park off with the fisker like christian said we love all evs even the fisker we've really enjoyed it and for sixteen thousand bucks it's tough to beat really fun car here's our model 3 performance that we brought over here so that we could haul the fisker tires which we're replacing on this car we're probably going to maybe sell the red model 3 and then keep the performance one along with the Fisker for a little bit. That's kind of the idea with the Mach-E is to get rid of the Red Model 3, which is now getting up there in miles. It's well over 50,000 miles now, which is pretty impressive. Not that it particularly worries us and not that we're the type to get a new car every 50,000 miles, but a little more of that SUV platform to get a little bit more uh, utility out of the trunk. So hatchback feature of the Mach-E will be nice. After 50,000 miles, we don't need two Tesla Model 3s, uh, but we're definitely gonna keep the performance because this is the best daily driver for the money, in my opinion. Absolutely love this car. Three Mach-E's like on the oh. lot? Oh, wow, yeah, look at this. They got three of them. Three, three? So this is, I think most of them are the base model. I don't know what they're calling them here. Select. Yeah, Select is the base model. They're like 46,000 bucks. But remember, a, a big, big reason we're even doing this is because we get that nice uh, tax credit from good old government Joe Biden. So $7,500 in all states. And then if you're in a state that gives you an additional amount, I think like New York's 2,500, I think Colorado gives you extra money beyond that. It's like a no brainer. You get this huge discount. And then these two are, is this one ours? No, no, this one's not ours. This is a premium, right? Premium all wheel drive. Yeah, premium all wheel drive. So that gets you like nicer interior bits, but the first edition gives you the painted brake calipers, special door sills, like these are body color red instead of black. There's a couple little appearance things that are different. Um, nothing too crazy, but you also get it a lot earlier, which is cool. And of course the, uh, the GT Sport model, everybody's gonna be commenting, why didn't you just wait for the GT, blah, 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 blah. Well, we don't wanna wait uh, six more months. It costs a lot more money too. And we got this white one here, it's, Mach EX, so it's extended range, but not four wheel drive. So this, are they calling this the premium as well? Yeah, I think yeah, so. Just called premium. Okay, so yeah, premium, just rear not all wheel drive. drive. So you actually get better range with the rear wheel drive, uh, but for us having it as possibly a Montana vehicle, we're definitely gonna want that all wheel drive if it goes up in the snow. So they actually have two more over here. They said, we, we just checked in and they said, the, uh, the people are finishing the documents as we speak. So give us some more time, walk the lot. So we said, no problem. And then we also got the Bronco Sport here. Cool, but the two door is definitely the one you want. So anyway, that's the silver, that's the chalk. And then we got the red and the white. So we went with the red because we're replacing our red model three. We like bright cars. Um, we could have gone with the grabber blue, which in hindsight, seeing some grabber blues in person, I think grabber blue would have been a cooler option, but this red just looks so clean and it replaces the red model three. So that's kind of why we went with red. 
but comment down below if grabber blue would have been cooler or if that's too much. It's a big car, so that bright of a blue is really a lot. Real quick guys, before we take delivery of the Mach-E, we have to give a big thanks and special shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of online classes for creative and curious people just like you and me. There are endless classes to choose from to feed your curiosity on a myriad of different subjects from personal finance to web development, photography, time management, and entrepreneurship, just to name a few. I'm currently taking a class called YouTube Success, how to script, shoot, and edit with MKBHD. So to hear his little how-tos, tips, and tricks on how he edits and sets up his beautiful cinematic videos is definitely something I can learn from and take some notes on to make my videos even better for you guys. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, therefore there are no ads while you're watching content, and they're also constantly adding new premium classes. And best of all, Skillshare costs less than $10 a month with the annual subscription. That's equivalent to like two cups of Starbucks coffee. So go ahead and click the link in the description below to get exploring your creativity. The first 1,000 people to hit that link down below will get a free trial of premium membership. So what are you waiting for? Support those who support us by checking out Skillshare today. Let's get taken delivery. It does feel like super weird to be here at a dealership and hear them talk about like documents and pages to sign because we don't do that. As you guys know, we find good deals, usually in the form of highly depreciated exotic cars from the early 2000s like Ed Bullion. So to be here at a dealership, like it feels weird, but like we said, it makes perfect sense because to get that tax credit, you have to buy the car brand new. And if you look on first edition Mach-E's, there's only one that sold on eBay and it actually sold for like 65 grand over sticker price. And there's only one available on eBay, they're asking over sticker price as well. So with the tax credit, we're actually getting a pretty good deal buying it brand new. They just gave us another update saying that they're almost done, but that they put our car on the charger around the corner. So we're gonna go see if we can find it, right? Cause we've, we've only looked at it once briefly, but it was dark outside. So let's go see what it looks like for the first time. We specifically told them, do not wash it, leave it dirty. It's obviously super dirty coming off the transporter from Mexico where these cars are made. So we don't, we don't want any of the paint getting scratched. Not that it would, but just to play it safe, brand new paint, we want to keep it extra nice and wash it with our lambs wool wash mitts and stuff when we get back to the garage later. So stick around for that part of the video, getting to know the car up close and personal, but I think I see it just ahead. There it is, Christian. First time laying eyes on it in the sun. The Mach E. Huge red brake calipers. That looks pretty serious. Yeah, look at the size of these. These are way bigger than the uh, Model 3 brakes. So, 19 inch wheels. Man. Yeah, the bigger wheels. I mean, this has all the options completely loaded as a first edition. And these, these things are actually pretty rare. We're not trying to say this is going to be some collector's item, but it may hold its value a little better. So it's on the charger here. So this is a new site for all you Tesla people. This is not a Tesla charger, Christian. What the heck is this? So right now we're plugged into J1772 that would be at like blank charging stations. But these chargers are all over the place. There's some at the nearby town center and then at Electrify America, they installed high speed CCS combo chargers. So uh, DC charging and that will utilize ah. that lower receiver interesting this outlet so that's how you get the tesla supercharger speed yeah so dc with this. charging and ac charging j ah. two ccs combo so that's what's cool if you don't know a lot about electric cars you probably think tesla superchargers are like the only way to charge fast but little do some people know dc fast charging is just as fast in fact there was a porsche tycon that set the coast to coast record for an electric car yeah so that was with dc fast charging so that's pretty impressive that lets you know that there's enough of the stations out there and that they charge really quickly you know, around here especially, we have uh, three charging stations right by our house with complimentary charging, which is really cool. So it's gonna be great. Okay guys, just finish up the paperwork. We got the keys. We are ready to roll for the first time. This, we've never driven it. Yeah. Nor we sat in it for Pete's sake. <laughs> so it is really, really interesting. And I, and I haven't watched too many of the early spy press shots or anything. So it looks like the gear selector is down here and it's just a matter of twisting it. I noticed like um, on the mirrors that there's a blind spot warning and that's nice something that Tesla doesn't have and other just kind of nice new car features that maybe Tesla is lacking. Here we go. That's pretty nice. So obviously 
it's going to be very smooth and quiet. Yeah, so the seating position is of course higher and it's more like a small SUV, which is definitely new for us because our biggest car is probably like our Rolls Royce or something. Um, and the, the truck, of course, you feel like you're on top of the world, but this is that, that crossover kind of platform and I see why people like it. Right when we left, it had seven miles on it. Fresh off the train from some place huh. in Mexico, I forgot the city name, but these aren't made in Detroit like you might think. They're actually made in Mexico. Other immediate first impressions. Big screen. Yeah, when I was maneuvering out of that parking lot with reverse, the bird's eye view camera and the really great rear view camera is way nicer than our Rolls Royce, which of course back in 2010, that was pretty new cutting edge technology, but they do a really good job of it with this. I love seeing that. We got in, it is near 100% charged and it is projecting 241 miles of range. It is very hot outside and it doesn't have much history to base off your driving characteristics from. So yeah, that's what I'm thinking. With only seven miles on the clock, that was probably just a test track kind of test course that they take these cars on and mm -hmm. probably put them through their paces a little bit. So we'll see how that changes if it goes up or down. Um, but right now we're driving it very softly. So that may that number may go up because it's actually rated at EPA 270 miles with the extended range battery pack and the all wheel drive, this configuration. So 270, it's not bad for weighing a good amount. I think it's 500 pounds heavier than the Model Y, you know, obviously a lot bigger than like say a Model 3. So to have 270 mile range, that's pretty good. Now it does have a pretty big battery pack, right Christian? 100 kilowatts, but 88 usable or something? Yeah, like 98 kilowatts and 88 of which are usable. So, so compared to the Model 3 of like 74 kilowatts, it's it's got a lot more battery and that's yeah. why I think the range is, is uh, you know, higher up there, 270. And some people are saying you can get over 300 if you baby it. Now obviously this car has a good amount of performance. This is like the top of the line one that you can get right now. So this is the fastest Mach-E you can buy, money can buy until the GT comes out, of course. But like we said, we didn't want to have to wait till the end of summer because uh, we always do our big summer road trip and we plan to take this car. Uh, the first big trip will be to Montana, thousands of miles with no Tesla superchargers having to rely on, you know, other chargers. Oh, roll your window down. This dude's probably. Hey there. How do you like your ride? Oh, oh it's got. <laughs> 16 miles on it. So, uh, just pick. I haven't seen one in real life yet. Oh, oh awesome. Yeah. It looks good. It looks a lot better. Than Thank, Thank you. you. It's dirty. We have to wash it. We just picked it up 20 minutes ago, but yeah. it's good so far. Just got it. Oh, yeah. yeah, 20 minutes ago. Yeah. It's, it's a beautiful thing never having to use gas again, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're looking forward to that and uh, seeing what these Electrify America chargers are all about and, and some of the other. Uh, awesome non-Tesla superchargers, so we'll see how it stacks Enjoy, up. Man, thank yes, you very thank much. You. you too. See ya. That's hilarious. That's what are the good. odds of that? I've read that on the forums. People say you get a ton of attention in the Mach-E's because, because it is a Mustang. People are all like, mm. what does that new electric Mustang fan, look like? Fan and like, group. like you just heard him say, he says it looks a lot better in person and yeah. he was surprised to see one. This is the first one he's ever seen. That was a Model 3 owner. To yeah. have one of the first production ones on the road, we will be getting some reactions. I didn't even mm. think about that. And here we've driven it four miles and somebody's mm -hmm. already like freaking out, rolling down their window. Oh, that's so funny when he said, it's a beautiful thing to never use gas again. We're just like, yeah, but V12s. <laughs> 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 you saying when that guy rolled up oh it's a performance this is the fastest one i can buy yeah so right what's now. this drive modes all about i can't read it because the sticker's okay. in the way this goes to show it's brand new we're not lying like and this isn't a press too. car otherwise we wouldn't take this off wow asmr new car unboxing asmr is there like an, it's a screen protector a, there's another yeah. screen protector there's another one we'll, we'll remove that and replace it with a proper screen protector Oh, what do we do now? All right, there we go. So it's got engage, whisper, and unbridled. Unbridled is like the sport mode, which I don't know. Is there a break-in period? 16 miles on the car. I don't want to like <laughs> hit it and like launch it. Um, we'll give it a slight acceleration just in case there is some sort of break-in period. I don't think there would be, but we don't want to break anything right off so, the bat. All right, so whisper mode and one pedal driving. I do like that. I love regen. Used to it with the Tesla. I've got it mastered. And propulsion sound like the Fisker propulsion sound so whisper mode but just for fun a little roll on it whoa okay yeah that's, right. uh, that's got some punch that's whisper mode and it's just as quick as a Tesla speaking of performance it's not the GT which is gonna be like all-wheel drive crazy three point something zero to 60 
But like we said, we don't need that because we have a Model 3 Performance, which will still smoke it. So this will slot in as like the number two Performance Mach-E right below the GT when it does come out. But as of now, this is the fastest, biggest, best performing one that money can buy. It's just right for what we need. It matches the Model 3 perfectly. Same four point something zero to 60, very similar to our long range uh, rear wheel drive Model 3. It'll be a perfect replacement in that regard. If we choose to sell it, you guys got to comment down below keep all the electric cars or maybe sell them all three and do this but then we also got to plan ahead because we're gonna be getting the cyber truck i mean it's like pokemon you got to catch them all so we're working one at a time um you know the the hummer ev is going to be coming out i think we may want to get that we may want to get the rivian oh geez and now you guys see why we didn't get the tycon uh turbo s because that was over two hundred thousand dollars for not even insane performance numbers and range i was really let down by the numbers and that's probably the biggest reason why we said we're gonna pass on that because yeah. we could hear we could take the 200k and put it into so many other cool electric cars we can get a cyber truck a maki -E, and a rivian for 215k yeah. like that was our logic and i think it was the right move because now we get to show you guys more cool cars and interesting note we are still at 241 mile range it has not dropped one and we've gone well over one mile so i think as it learns that we're driving very efficiently it's gonna bump that up my turn to drive so he's put in park Oh, okay. Easy enough. Door handles are kind of weird. Half mechanical, mo mostly mechanical, I guess. Looks like the shifter on a 992 uh, Porsche. You can see just how tall the battery pack is from the side. It, there's a huge section there, which cuts down on your ground clearance. This car actually only has like five point something inches of ground clearance, which is quite low for a crossover thing. The, mo the Model Y has an inch higher of ground clearance. Okay, one the final last little. Oh yeah, yeah, no, plenty there. We're not even pushing it, but you can tell it, it's got the power, which it should. This is the, you know, this is the fast one. It's got some sort of autopilot so far, adaptive cruise control and lane keep or something, but they're adding more features to make it more of an autopilot competitor. For the money, very interesting uh, compared to the Tesla. I'm sure we'll do some comparison video at some point because yeah. we have a lot of, te we keep mentioning Tesla, 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 but that's what we have to compare to it. We have driven so many miles in Teslas. If you add them up, we're well over 100,000 miles in Teslas. Yeah, more like 150, count the Model X yeah. at 50. We'll have some good comparisons. But mm -hmm. so far, this this is stacking up pretty nicely. Mm -hmm. Doug DeMuro, the Smoking Tire, all the guys who've had Mach-E's to review, they've all praised it pretty highly. Yeah, it is pretty much the next best thing, or if something doesn't meet your needs in a Tesla, and this maybe does, then it is a perfectly uh, good competitor. Cool. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get our cleaning supplies, give this thing a nice, fresh bubble bath, the first one of many during its ownership, and, and then, then a ceramic coating. Well, there you guys have it. About mm, three hours later now, sun is about to set. We just finished the hyper clean detail of the Mach-E with the full ceramic coating. Yeah, so a must for any new car with perfect paint and you want to ceramic coat it to keep that paint looking perfect and caught the timing just right. We'll hit golden hour and sunset up at one of our favorite photo spots. One cool thing is it doesn't have door handles. It has buttons, which are locked. Nubs coming off. Because here's the key. The Mustang key. What do you guys think? Comment down below. Do you like the Mustang name or do you hate it? I feel like it's either you love it or you hate it. You hit that little button. So I guess it helps with wind resistance. Not, there's not a fat door handle sticking out. Instead, it's just whoop. 
and then it pops right open. This thing will never look this clean again. I don't know if we can keep it looking like this. Look at the wheels. Sit down. Here are the first edition kick plates. What's cool is you get this screen up here. That's one complaint of the Model 3 that people had is that you have no screen whatsoever straight in front of you, no gauge cluster. It's all on the main screen. Whereas Ford, they put this little screen here with all of your essentials while driving, which I guess that's cool. We didn't really find it that big of a deal. It was having... just a learning curve. It's in everybody's video of when they're first getting their Model 3 delivered. Oh, I can so far to look at the speedometer off the taking your eyes off the road. But once you've driven it for like a week or so, I don't think we had as much of that complaint. It's certainly not a downside to have it. I would definitely have one if I had the choice. True, yeah, so that's definitely a pro. The power start button is up here. Ooh, there we go, we got the icons coming on. Look at that. So, there are your essentials. So you got your range. Your speed, obviously, your odometer, we're up to 18 miles, oh yeah. I think this is to scan your eyes to make sure you're paying attention on self-driving. That's so weird, on the camera, it's flashing red. It's like infrared, or I don't know why it's flashing on the camera yet. This in person, there is nothing lit up here but on the screen you have these flashing red lights. That's so weird. Let's take you through some of the important features. So one thing that I think is stupid but a lot of people like is the whole volume knob being attached to uh the screen some that people weird yeah people were complaining that on teslas it was a button and it was so annoying to hit the button up and down i want a physical wheel i didn't mind the button at all the fact that there's now this like wheel glued to the screen i don't like it but yeah you all asked for it careful what you wish for but I, it's not bad it's just weird yeah it's just kind of weird but i guess it's like it's Can you quick quick Please access to turning up the volume which before in the tesla you had to get like your finger just right so yeah. whatever that's one thing that i don't really care for but it's no big deal car controls here okay so that, there was the drive modes the camera ah, view. there's okay. the 360. Oh, wow. Wow. Like the front surroundings dang that's cool so you can access them at any time access driver assistance valet mode look at all the settings tons of Whoa. different things in there Good. general displays i mean probably even more options than tesla a lot to play with that's for sure we're gonna have to spend some time going through this and configuring it how we'd like but the default settings are pretty good. Uh, when you lock it, the honk is way too loud, so hopefully we can turn that down. Yeah, very user-friendly. Um, I think that's important with us brand new to a brand that we're able to just get in and work work it. You know, we're not having much trouble. As wireless charging, that's really cool. Both it's USB-A and USB-C, so that's nice. Oh, uh, okay, for all sorts of phones. Nice storage, everything's pretty typical new car so let's go to the trunk show you guys the charging setup and here we got the j1772 ford charger can this work on the fisker too i would think so j1772 you're saying we can use a ford charger on a fisker okay that would be cool the red now that it's clean boy this really pops it does really look good i do really like it in person clean roof line oh yeah the roof the roof check this out if you guys didn't know it's got the full panoramic sunroof, which is really cool. No center uh, piece like in the Model 3. And like Doug DeMiro mentioned in his video, this part of the roof line, they made black so that from afar, it kind of gives the car a very sloped appearance. But then you get up close and you realize, oh wait, you know, five inches is actually this black piece, which gives you the headroom on the interior. So kind of a neat little uh, design oh, trick. So you guys have it. Comment down below what future videos you want to see with this bad boy. I know this was kind of out of left field. We didn't really ever hint about us reserving one of these because it was so long ago. And I guess I just forgot to mention it in a video or on Instagram, but here you go. We got a Mach-E to probably replace our red Model 3. But comment down below if you think that's a bad idea or if we shouldn't do that, but kind of makes sense to me. We can recoup nearly, you know, the red Model 3 didn't really depreciate that much. So given that we put over 50,000 miles on it, we're not gonna lose that much money and it'll cover a lot of the cost of this new Mach-E. So it makes sense. Yeah, and we're certainly fortunate that we'll be able to test this car, really put it through its paces before we make that decision to let go of the red Model 3. If the charging network or some infrastructure or just something really doesn't make sense about this car, doesn't mm -hmm. work about this car, first off, we'll let you know, and then you'll see that we might still have our red Model 3, but but uh, we'll only know after we get a good feel for it and start driving it around. Yeah, we'll see. And if for some reason we don't like it when we really start driving it, then by the time the Hummer EV comes out or the Cybertruck, you know, we could sell this for hopefully not a too big of a loss. 
and then uh, you know pick it up the next lecture thing so it's just it's just cool something fun and uh, hope you guys enjoy this one leave a big like if you do like the new pickup and drop a comment down below your opinions on the Mach-E if this was a Tesla video we'd leave you with our referral code about purchasing a Ford Mach-E but I don't True. think that they have that it's still gets done through a dealership, not like Tesla direct to consumer. Went very smoothly, so thank you to everybody at the Ford dealership for helping us uh, get this nice and quick and easy. Oh yeah, and if any Ford executives see this video and want to uh, give us a free upgrade to the GT when it comes, we will happily take you up on that. Maybe upgrade to the GT, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. See how much we like it when we actually get driving it. So thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned to our Instagram for behind the scenes with this car. Well, that wraps up this beautiful evening. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Take care. That it feels right